asking what advice can you give someone who has just completed an undergraduate and wants to get into industry eventually to be like you, Richard, I guess, she means that, and like what opportunities should I take advantage of? So mine, I'm, I'm, I would ask, I would like to ask whether there is a, like a predefined or general path that people take to get into academia, maybe get to a PhD, then switch to industry. Or like for a person like me, uh, I'm planning to do a master's in bioinformatics. So I have a BSc in biology, but uh, I, I took a detour. I, I became a, a program's assistant in health committee at Council of Governors. Then right now I just did a data science course at Moringa so that now I can have the data science skills to be able to do my master's. So like, uh, I feel like I have deviated a lot because I haven't really liked, I don't like academia that much, <laughs> like industry. <laughs> Though I see most people in the industry have to transition from, them, from academia. So I wonder if there's a predefined path, like a general path you could take. Um, well, let me answer, let, let me answer the first question of, uh, uh, I can't remember the name of the person. Kate. Uh, Kate, Kate that has, yeah. Kate that has just finished undergraduate. Um, for me, when I finished undergraduate, I think uh, one of the things that I actually, I, I started my master's immediately, but what I've seen other people doing is uh, there's a lot of scientific uh, recruitment agencies out there that recruits people to go and work in uh, different small pharmaceutical companies. And they're always looking for people because the more people they, 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 you know, unlike Kenya, you know, here in the UK, it's quite uh, straightforward. When you see a job being advertised, you apply, you chances are if you have the uh, uh, papers to uh, write to work, you can, you can get it. So those guys are just interested in getting you from, getting you into that company. If you've displayed enough uh, skills that, I mean, if you, if you satisfy the requirements that they've uh, advertised on that particular job. So there's so many agencies, use Total Jobs, use, uh, what's the other one, jobs.ac.uk. There's so many links that you can use. And then from there now, uh, because again, one of the things in the UK is they need to see work experience. So once you start doing these jobs, even if it's a three months contract, don't say no, just take it and see. Once you get into the system there, you could always ask for an extension or you can actually get in and then you see if there's opportunities being advertised when you're in the system. So that's one of the things that helps a lot. And uh, people get people get jobs through that. Um, as for you, David, I don't think there is a predefined path. Um, the thing is with bios, with with biofarmers, especially like with Novo Nordisk, if you see the guys who are coming in to work, most of them are, have already attained PhDs and they've been doing all these complex research, answering all these complex research questions. So there is a lot of competition for people to get into the pharmaceutical company. That's why. Uh, I mean, this space, that's why you see a lot of people going into academia to further their studies, and then they come into industry. So that's one of the things that I've seen. And then uh, if, and, and it's not to say that people without PhDs cannot get into pharma, they can still get into pharma. The thing is they will get into pharma, but then they would take longer to to go up the ladder because they would not be uh, given projects they'll not be given projects to lead basically because they would they would trust someone who has finished their phd and has a postdoc to lead the project and then you'll always be tagging along so it will take you longer to transition to 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 go up the ladder but it's not impossible so people still apply and they get through all right, thank you. Thank you for that, Richard. And I'll uh, ask Joyce question, which I think someone is has also asked. So Joyce says, is there a way to have one foot in pharma and another one in academia? Or is it better to just target a research? I think this is a research and development kind of pharma. 
And I think some will ask the same question, which is uh, how do academia and industry collaborate? Are there instances where one gets input from the other? So I think okay. they're sort of like related. Yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. yeah, uh, like in Novo Nordisk, what we do best is we have something called uh, the Novo Nordisk Fellowship, where uh, postdocs can apply for that fellowship. And then they're partly sponsored by uh, Novo Nordisk and they're partly sponsored by the university. So you have the best of both worlds. Like we have a lot of Novo Nordisk fellows here who are postdocs at the University of Oxford that come and work here for three years. And then after that three years, after those three years, they can either decide to apply to be absorbed fully by the, by the industry or they can look for another industry to work in, yeah, so it's it's very, very possible. We have a lot of that. And then uh, with regards to collaboration, Novo Nordisk uh, Oxford is based, uh, is located at the heart of the University of Oxford at uh, the Old Road campus. And the reason for that was to foster this hybrid program of uh, doing uh, research with the university. So we have a lot of research uh, collaboration to the university. Myself, I've done at least three research with uh, some professors at the university successfully. Because now, with the the advantage of that is Novo Nordisk, we have the financial muscle, so we can sponsor whatever research that comes through our door, as long as it's something that we will benefit from in the long term. If it's something within our cardiometabolic space, then you know you can come, put your proposal. And then we, we 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 decide on how to progress with that, and we have something called the postgraduate symposium, and that is normally to just foster this collaboration. So we have we invite all the professors and postdocs to come in at Novo Nordisk and have coffee and talk to the uh, scientists in Novo Nordisk, and we ask what they're doing, what we're doing, and then we see if there's a potential route for collaboration and if you strike something then you you take it offline create run up uh, write a proposal submit the proposal it gets reviewed and then we we start the collaboration so it's it's very very possible to have a footing in pharma and in academia at the same time all right and is this pharma dependent uh richard uh you know you worked in different pharmaceutical industries was it was this the case for the others as well, or this is just yeah. the case? Yeah, oh, no, no, yeah. Most of the R and E D, they do a lot of collaborations okay. and they do a lot of uh, fellowship. And oh. also, one thing that I didn't mention is uh, we also sponsor a lot of uh, PhD programs. So that's yeah. another way of collaborating. So now this PhD student will have a supervisor in academia, and you'll have a supervisor in Novo Nordisk. Oh. Okay, yeah. but for these programs, you have to apply for the PhD in the university, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah. So you need to have a uh, sponsor, a uh, supervisor at the university. That's right. Okay. okay. Yeah. All right. So um, Peter is asking, how do you ensure that there is growth in career primarily in publications in case you might want to transition back to academia where publication is a critical measure of growth? Uh, in, in pharmaceutical company like Novo Nordisk, we are not obliged to publish yeah uh but it we're not obliged to publish but you can publish if you think your research has uh some benefits yeah but then again you know with pharma the way it works is if uh you come up with the target and you think it's a good target it's most of the time we don't want to mention that target so maybe the the, the the best we can do here is maybe to publish yeah. a method but we won't publish the target mm. because that is key to uh, for to us going forward. So All there's right. still room for publication, but mm. it just depends on the nature of publication. It becomes a lot more difficult to publish in uh, yeah. in an industrial setup because you don't want to give too much yeah. to the competitors. Yeah. yeah. So this means that if you're considering, you know, going back to academia, then that would mean you're going to restart again. Right. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I've not seen anyone transitioning back to academia and such, you know. Yeah, mm -hmm. I've always seen it going the other way around. So I'm probably not the best person to answer that. OK, okay. Yeah. that's that's OK. All right. Uh, Amara is asking, uh, Richard, thank you for sharing about your background and research. 
Um, a final year PhD student with a background in medical statistics and computational genomics. I am looking to transition into industry, especially novel as I live close to it. I would like to ask a few questions. How difficult is it to get into novel? I usually don't see many job advertisements. Uh, I'm keen on data science bioinformatics role. Also regarding work-life balance, I think you've spoken about this, but how often are you allowed to work from home? Uh, what's the pay like and do they offer benefits? <laughs> okay, maybe we can we can do one question at a time. Yeah. How difficult is it to get into Novo? Uh, and it's not... I think um, speak about also where they post their job uh, adverts. Mm. Uh, it's it's not difficult to get you to Novo. Uh, as a matter of fact, we've actually, uh, we used to be about maybe a hundred uh, as, as of, as at uh, the beginning of the year and now we are about 150 so we've been going on a recruitment overdrive to be honest i don't know where how you've missed the uh, job uh, uh, advertisements if you go on the nordisk website there's always jobs going out they have been recruiting quite a lot to be honest is this um, because i think there's the major website for the novo nordisk yeah you can filter it to oxford Okay. And then you okay. see all the jobs that have been in Oxford, yes. All right. So the uh, Oxford uh, website is one of the things, one of the uh, areas, and then there is also a referral. Mm. There's some, if you have someone who is in, in, in at Novo Nordisk, we, we tend to know the jobs that are going out. Mm. Yeah. We tend okay. to know where there's, you know, there's someone, a, a director or a leader is looking for someone in a particular area. How yeah. many branches does Novo Nordisk uh, have? Uh, RNED, we have uh, the headquarters in Denmark, of course. Yeah. Uh, and then we have one uh, in China and then we have one in Boston. Okay, okay. Yeah, so in and, four, we have four RNED in the, okay. yeah. Do any of these do malaria research? That's the question from Joy. Malaria? Mm -hmm. No, no, no. We basically, I mean, we majorly focus on cardiometabolic diseases, not nothing the tropical. Diabetes, obesity, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. All right. So, and then the question about work life balance are you allowed to work from home? Uh, very much so, yes. Uh, you, at times, if you don't have anything to do in the lab and you just want to, uh, work from home. At times for me, and I can just decide on Monday and say, I'm going to read papers. Yeah. I'm going to catch up with literature. Yeah. So it's always just good to mention to your manager that today I'm not coming in. I'm doing, mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm, I'm focusing on reading papers. I don't even have to go on my computer. So it's, yeah. it's very possible. Yeah. We're not, we're, they, they don't hold us by the wall and say, you have to come here and work. No. We don't have that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. it's very very flexible. It's uh yeah, it's a very mm. good working environment. You know, in pharma, they always perceive it as a lot like uh, it's pharmaceutical company. You have to the, the you have you have to you, you probably be you you're working really really hard and you don't have time to rest. But no, I think it's the opposite. There is pressure. Don't get me wrong. There is pressure to do work and to deliver because they expect targets to be generated because of the way they'll come our competitors, you know, the Eli Lilly, the, you know, we have to keep an eye on them. And then some of the targets that we have, some of the drugs that we have on the market, they have an expiry period. So once they've expired, then people are going to start generating all these generics. So we need to have the next product in the market. So therefore we are obliged to try and identify as many targets as possible. All right, yeah. all right. And the last question is, what is the pay like? Do you, they offer benefits? Oh, uh, yes. Um, the pay is really, really good, to be honest. And uh, sadly to say, uh, the junior research scientist at Novo Nordisk without a PhD, who just has a master's, is probably paid higher than a postdoc at the University of Oxford. So, <laughs> so industry is really good in that, say, in that sense. So. Yeah, so it's always good. I mean, it, it, again, it depends with what you mm -hmm. want to mm -hmm. to transition into. But then Novo Nordisk is one of the companies that actually look after their employees very well. Um, they don't have this issue of hierarchy. 
So you'll find someone who's a vice president, but then or a senior vice president in the company, but you actually have you contact you can contact them directly. Mm, mm. It's one of the best things with working uh, that that I've found working for Novo Nordisk in particular. Mm. And then with the benefits, there's so many benefits. You've got yeah. you know bonuses. You know every end of the year, uh, the salary increase every every other uh, year every year rather. Oh, every year um, there's a salary increase. So they, yeah. yeah, there's always so it's always based on performance, and that's why I'm uh, saying you know uh, you have to work really really hard to yeah. make sure that you're 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 and that to make sure that you're generating data and targets that yeah uh, going forward because at the end of the year you get rewarded you get rewarded mm. a bonus you get you know your salary increase mm. and it's all a percentage based on performance based mm. uh, percentage yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, okay. I, I was just thinking about a, a random question, but let me not ask it. Um, Samuel is asking from your, you mentioned that from your observation, people rarely transition from industry to academia. Why is that the case? Um, because of once you test industry, you say they rarely transition from industry yes, to academia. From, yeah, from yeah because once you test, yeah. Because once you test industry, you just yeah. realize that you're missing out on a lot of things. You know, the mm -hmm. collaborative mindset, uh, mm -hmm. the uh, sheer amount of resources that mm -hmm. pharmaceutical industry uh, offer. Um, you don't have to worry about funding. Uh, you tend to brush shoulders with people who are higher up in the organizations, you know, all these vice presidents, you know, the, you see targets actually coming from whatever your work you're doing, whatever you're doing here, going straight into the the patient. So there's a lot of yeah. satisfaction that, mm. you know, when you start thinking about going back to that mm. very independent uh, mm. research type approach, uh, mm. it's kind of defeating. Mm. So it's yeah th that's why you find a lot of people staying here and then there is room for growth you always find you know you've grown from as i said senior scientist to specialist to director mm. Mm. and there's so many responsibilities as well as you 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 keep growing mm. Mm. all right all right uh ross is also asking and a follow-up question you i think you had spoken about it but uh, i think you can still talk about it for a junior research scientist position, for them to progress to senior, do they need to go back and do a PhD? Um, no, uh, but it's going to take you a while to get to uh, uh, a senior level. That, that, that's been the trend here. So you find a lot of people who came here with masters Mm -hmm. uh, at some point, they had to go back to do a PhD and then come back to carry on in their research because, as I said, they trust someone who has a PhD to handle these mm -hmm. big projects, to be a project lead, mm -hmm. and you're always just going to be supporting that role. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you can you can stay for long. You can yeah. you know you need to work really hard and prove that you can do. Uh, what the senior scientists are doing, but from my experience, uh, even people who've come up with really good data and they don't have a PhD, mm. uh, they've struggled to climb. So there's mm. always a barrier. I don't know why we've yeah. tried to ask, but yeah. it's yeah, it, it's just what it is. So just get that PhD. <laughs> if you can, just, yes, just, just do get it. Get yeah. PhD. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much for sharing. You know. The, your experiences with us. I think this is very useful insights for everyone that is considering uh, research in academia, uh, sorry, industry, <laughs> in industry. Um, before I close, uh, do we have any other person that has a burning question? Because I think we're also running out of time. But I think my final question to you would be, you know, having worked in industry for a very long time, okay, not very long time, but for a, you know, tangible amount of years, has you, has this changed your perspective about academia research? Um, you know, has it changed your mind about being in the academia field? Uh, no, not, not much. 
not mm-hmm. much to be honest um because we need academia anyway mm-hmm. uh, 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 there is a lot of work that is produced in mm-hmm. an academic setup mm-hmm. it's just a matter of where do you want to do what do you want to where do you want to head with your career if you want to become a professor or if you want to become a pi mm-hmm. so there's a lot of research that comes out of that space and then without academia obviously then we would have us in the industrial mm-hmm. setup mm-hmm. so it's mm-hmm. kind of raised us to think in a certain way yeah. so that we may be able to fit into this industrial setup and then mm. you come in the industrial setup and then you just have to adapt and think differently yeah. in a collaborative yeah. mindset yeah.